think people know that I hate it now. I don't know why he doing that. Grammy a woman. Yo, 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 it's the Mally Bros Podcast, episode 102. Happy Friday. We in our third season. Yes, sir. Uh, we getting some good weather. It's kinda. Kinda. Rainy days. We were talking about how May was fucking trash when it came to the weather. Think about May when you was growing up. Yeah. May when you was growing up, it was hot every day. You was outside every day. It nah, was- you're right. The first 15 days of May, it was 50 degrees, 55, 60. What is it today? I bet it's cold. 69. 69 this morning. Bullshit. Seven, okay, yeah, 70 degrees. It's May. It's May 20. We in the May 20s. It yeah. should be 95 degrees. And for those that don't know, we're listening from the East Coast. Or recording on the, the DMV East Coast. side. So it's probably hot as fucking. If you live in Arizona, we get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Shout out to the DMV. Stand up. We in the building. We've been running DMV shit for how long? You know what I mean? Yeah. Not we've been running the DMV, but you know what I mean? We've been standing on DMV shit. Oh, yeah, for sure. I think that's dope. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of people that come from the DMV that y'all might not even be hip to that are like famous as hell. Athletes, entertainers. Oh, for sure. The DMV. finest women. Finest women. Pretty girl county. That's where we from. PG, stand up. Where we at? We got any PG listeners? Terrence, all right. This is not a... Look, I think it's a radio show. Where we at? Somebody say something. <laughs> I'm alone up here? <laughs> I must be by myself up here. Talking about myself up here. But how are, how are you, bro? Mental health check. Mental health check. I would say that I am... What, uh, on the verb. I need all the love. Pick my daughter up. I need all the love. Give me all the... I'm stressed out, stressed out, stressed out. <laughs> so, no, nah, I, I would say that I'm straight, but, like, y'all know, it's hard to have a positive mindset and a positive... Attitude sometimes with everything that's going on in the world. I know that everybody has seen what's happened in Texas. Yeah. Um, just to have that followed by the shooting in Buffalo, it's just been a crazy week. You trying to keep it. my head yep. up, you know what I mean? Because, you know, we got other life things to deal with. It's almost like everybody else still has their same life problems, same things that they got to deal with. We all have to deal with the worry of this now. Like I was in the grocery store. Two days ago, y'all know I stay at the grocery store. The, the main place you can see me is there. Is there. <laughs> but I just felt this bullshit anxiety again. And I was like, damn. Like, I told Terrell, I said, damn, this could be the last place I'm walking into. I told him. We used to look at, like, a bad neighborhood or I'm about to go to this club that's in this janky-ass area. But, this, like, you, you think, damn, this is the last, per- last place I'm going to walk into? Yeah. Now we saying that about elementary school? Yeah, the grocery Convenience store? store? But my Both mental health me. is 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 all right, bro. I yeah. think I do a decent job of coping. What about you? I'm straight. I'm uh, I'm good too. Like, basically, echo the same thing you said. With everything that's happening, it is tough. It is tough sometimes. But yeah. it's like, damn. You know, I just lean on my vice. I lean on my, I lean on my support. My vices. My vices. Is that a good? Is vices a good thing or a bad thing? I don't know. I don't even know. We just gonna say it's a good thing for now. We know. We know you're hot. Yeah, like yeah. I lean on the shit that keep that takes me away from this world. Like I watch a lot of TV, a lot of y'all know I'm a big episodic TV guy, and so I just been kind of zoning out when I can. I didn't even go to the gym yesterday. I literally could have went to the gym. I had a little slight headache, but I said, you know what? I'm about to just chill. Nah, yeah, it's one of them days, bro. You wake up the next day feeling like shit after that day, though. Oh yeah, like today I got go. Cause crazy. now you be like, damn, I lost yeah. ten pounds overnight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But getting on your timeline, you can't help but see all of the the, yep. the shit. And it's crazy because I was just telling Terrence, we got on this podcast last week and was talking about tragedy and, mm-hmm. you know, and to have to come back. And now we're having another conversation about the exact same thing a week later. It's crazy. It is, man. Prayers go up to all of the families in Texas for the ones that lost people that they, I can't even, like, you don't even feel good yeah. giving prayers. Yeah. You know? These it's, days, you, I felt bad if I tweeted, damn, my prayer's out. Because there were so many, what's prayer's going to do? What's prayer's going to do? Yeah, and honestly, we lost 19 children and two teachers. Teachers that are severely underpaid. And now, I mean, like, just prayer, what is, when, what is prayer going to do for real? Like, and honestly, I got into it with some spiritual folks on Twitter. I'm not, I'm not 
trying to shit on nobody. You know what I'm saying? But at this point, we need real action. Yeah. At this point, something has to happen or else it will happen again. Yeah, at this point, I don't think prayers are something that we would look at as a nece- as a necessity more so than it's... It's like a it's coping a, me- another it's coping a, mechanism. It's, it's an inevitability. It's literally, we're going to pray. We have to pray. That, like, goes without saying type shit. Oh, well, we just need thoughts and prayers. Okay, but yeah, we know that. But, like, all right, let's really talk about what we really, what we really want to change. Things that can really change shit. Like, because Kamala if we're being honest, was up there. I'm sorry. No, you, you got off. it. Go ahead. What'd she say? She was up there and was like, what are we... When is this going to... I don't know why our presidents are getting up there and saying things like, when are we going to... When are we... It's, it's wild as shit. It's wild. I just don't get it. Why don't... I would take such a more upfront approach. I'd be like, we've tried to pass this bill. Y'all didn't want to pass it. We tried to pass this. Y'all didn't want to pass it. So when we going to act? Because we putting these things out there. I would let the world know. Well, yo, we trying. You see Beto or Rook? But like asking us... Well, nah, what do you say? You ain't see what Beto did? Nah, that was this morning though, right? Nah, that was that was yesterday. Oh, he came out and said something, right? So Greg Abbott is the governor of Texas. Yeah. Everybody knows Greg Abbott has been coming out and saying more Yo, guns. More guns. He came out and was like, We're getting our ass whooped by California. Come on, Texans. Basically said try and push people to get guns. He made it easier for people to get guns. And Beto stepped to him in the middle of the conference, walked down that joint and was like, This is a bullshit. And this shit is on you type shit. And everybody was like, it was performative. He was trying to make a political statement because he's going to run for governor. I love that. I don't give a fuck if, it was, if y'all think it was performative. Everything in this politics is performative. He went down there and said, you're going to let this happen again. And you already let it happen again. And this shit is on you. So we, we can't do this. And he basically was saying, I just couldn't sit there and listen to that shit no more. Yeah, like. I just love that he went down there and did that. And you know, they're having an NRA convention on Saturday. The NRA came out and was like, this was the act of a lone, crazy person. We're going memor- to we're gonna, we're gonna share in the memory of those people at the convention this Saturday. But guess what? You can't bring guns to the convention because Trump is, will be there. And that's what I don't get. It's like, yo, we keep trying to make it seem like, oh, well, this is just this lunatic. Okay, yeah, you right, but he had access, though. We got hella lunatics. We got mad lunatics that have access. And, and that's the thing. There's lunatics actually everywhere in every country, but they don't all have access. I don't get what the, what the big deal is. I think I was telling real. Some of, some of y'all might even be listening. Y'all have AR-15s, and you like are real proud of it. Bang. If they put a law out that says that you can't have one of them joints, how is your life really impacted? You know what they say? They say, look, they, they, they be thinking... The pro gun people be like, "Come and take it," type shit. Come take my gun. The cops shit. are gonna come take your gun, and you're gonna give it up. You're not gonna shoot it out with the cops. <laughs> you're gonna give it up. I just think, I mean, you can try, you can try, and you're gonna either go to jail, give your gun up. My thing is this: if you see, if I see that like motherfuckers are taking chainsaws, right, and they cutting down, cutting people up. And they say, you know what? Nobody else can own a chainsaw unless you have a license for it. So we come in and get in every chainsaw, right? I'm not going to sit there and be batting and going crazy shit, please. Because that's what I'm saying. Your rifle sitting in your, you got an AR-15 sitting in your house for protection. All right. Mm-hmm. Cool. It's just like, why I understand that? I don't see how those people, those same people can't understand that, like, the same people that have that get that get that access to those guns are doing harm with them. So if we take them, people think, okay, taking these guns out of people's hands is only going to make us more weak, and the lunatics are still going to have access. But it's like, nah, because if that was the if case, then the, that would happen in other places. It doesn't happen anywhere else. And that's what I'm saying. I feel like, and I feel like I'm being kind of jumber, jib, speaking kind of gibberish. Like I'm not, I'm not really informed on like all of the gun laws. But I feel like if this 18-year-old dude didn't have the access to just get a gun at 18 and get a gun like that, that elementary school had fucking armed policemen there. If dude didn't have an AR-15, maybe we don't lose 19 kids. Right. That's what I'm saying. And honestly, Terrence, there's no scientific background, education, whatever you have to have. It's simple. These these type... These, this is my thing, too. Let me I'm just trying to say, I don't get why people... Feel like, oh, I don't want to give up my AR-15. Because you're using it for what? Call of Duty? 
What the fuck are you doing with it? Nah, and this is my thing too, Terrence. Like, people have this thing of, people have been, th th let's just keep it a buck. The whole I want to keep my guns thing from a global level came post-slavery. I'm not even going to make it a race thing. But most people want to keep their guns because they think about some type of revolution or something's going to happen where the government's going to come get me or something's going to happen where people are going to attack or whatever. Okay, I don't, I don't, bottom line, you can think that, like, I get that thought, I guess. Yeah. But who the fuck are you? Most of these people that keep their guns live in the best, most of these people that have these ARs live in the best neighborhoods, bro. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't even have to worry about they shit. They live in the best neighborhoods. That, this whole idea of you needing a assault rifle for protection, like, if you have a handgun, to me, I understand that. And my thing is, like, but when, a, a war, go. a war weapon... You need it for protection. I just don't get it. And what, even if you think that, even if we don't take people guns, I think they just need to make it, it needs to be tough as fuck to get a fucking gun like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It needs to be tough. It has to be tough. And they talk a lot about like power. People, this is about money and power. Yeah. I don't know how much the money the NRA makes for people and, you know, I don't know what type mm -hmm. of hit they would take if they make some law against... I, at this point, we don't give a fuck. We just want to stop seeing that this shit. We want to stop seeing this shit happen, man. Prayers up for the fam. We're not for gonna sure. try to kill y'all on the pod today with a whole bunch of political talk. We're gonna try to be that that vessel for y'all. You know, we're gonna yep. try to keep it lighthearted. For sure. All I'm gonna say is that there's been 200 plus mass shootings this year, and not one of y'all that kept y'all guns or that that love y'all assault rifles were there to save them fucking kids. Right. So you keeping your gun so for what? If y'all supposed to be protecting, then. You know what I'm saying? I'm not even going to speak on the dude. You see the dude who was like the big Kyle Rittenhouse fan and the big keep my guns. You're not going to take my guns. Kyle Rittenhouse was out there uh, going crazy. Kyle, Kyle, go Kyle Rittenhouse. And his daughter was one of the kids that died in the yeah. shooting. That was I'm not even going to speak on, the, on anything about it. But it's just crazy how like this shit. Now it came to your front door. Yeah, one of, the, one of them types. One of the parents. Yeah, now you... Have to deal with that. I mean, it's just like how much more blood. That's all. And this is for the people who say, "Well, Kyle Ritt I saw people saying that. Well, Kyle Rittenhouse didn't do anything wrong. He was found. I guess it ain't about the right and wrong more so than the audacity. A 18 year old wielding a, a rifle should be the biggest no. Yeah. We keep looking at laws. Okay, this law was written and basically by the book he didn't break. Okay, bet. And people don't understand cause and effect. Right. Because by Kyle Rittenhouse goes free. And now we have two more mass shootings with 18-year-olds with assault rifles that took it upon themselves to go out and do that. Right. That all, you know what I'm saying? And the first dude from, from uh, what was that, Buffalo? Yeah. Oh, he loved Kyle Rittenhouse. For sure. So, cause and effect. Anyway, once again, prayers up, man. We lost babies, and that's what's crazy. And, and RIP to those teachers that literally... You know, went down on their shield with them kids. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I only would pray that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't even have kids yet. But what kills me is we had uh, some of us sat and watched that Buffalo live stream. And as graphic as it was, there's a part of your psyche that tells you, okay, these are adults getting killed. I can't imagine kids. Half, as hard as it was to watch the Buffalo video, yep. I can't even fathom seeing that. Yeah. Kids. People happen to go out there and do DNA swabs because they couldn't identify. Yeah. And my thing is, we're going to leave it at this. Mm -hmm. With the Kyle Rittenhouse thing, too. I feel like that's why they wouldn't let a black dude get off for the same crime that, Ky that the same thing Kyle Rittenhouse did. Somebody run at a black dude. I got an assault rifle. I'm 18. I just blast them. Right? No matter who I kill, they're going to smack my wrist for having the audacity to be this young 18-year-old who took matters into my own hand. For sure. But I felt like, I don't, know what, I don't know what it is, but it's almost like there's a blind eye when it's not us. There's like this, whoa, he was bullied. We've seen it happen all the time. Damn, every podcast. Every fucking pod. We've Great. seen it happen all the time where people say, well, look, he was bullied. He was this. He had this problem. And it's like, damn, like, we would not get that. Oh, like, for sure. They would immediately smack our hand and we would get something wrong because, look, I feel like they know we can't let this become a thing. 
It's known that when people do stuff, look at Henry Ruggs. When Henry Ruggs crashed that car, killed his girl, they was mm-hmm. like, we're gonna make an exam- they're gonna make an example out of him. But it doesn't seem like they make an example out of certain others. Nah, for sure. And now, I told, I was talking to Ma, I said, when you know you about to just go to trial, I'm gonna just go to trial, they might give me life. You already coming home to a fucking trailer trash home already, you know? You probably wouldn't mind. You probably would do some crazy shit. You are, you know, you know there's a, a safety net of some sort. There's some sort of safety net that you might be able to yeah. cow written house, get your way out of it. And you'll you'll test that, that safety net. I was, this is what I think. I think we should publicly do something to these people who shoot up schools. You know how they hung Saddam Hussein and it was on TV? Uh-huh. There should be something like that. You know? Like a public. If you know that if you so that other people know, if you're gonna step out here and do mm-hmm. something, you're gonna have to face this. You know? Yeah. But that's, that's a- why some countries are stone you in front of everybody. But you know what's crazy about about that? Those countries, they all live on the same morals. It's all the same. And if people go against it, they all understand that this is the consequences. Like, I know I could probably get stoned for this, but I'm gonna just do it anyway because it's what I believe in type shit, and then it ends up happening. I mean, who wouldn't have the right who wouldn't wanna who wouldn't agree with that if Terrence, do you know how many people are also potential school shooters out there? Are also people don't even there's some there's people out there that don't even have sympathy for the kids because they care more about their guns. Like dead ass are saying stuff like I think if you see somebody get stoned on TV, you wouldn't want to get stoned. I mean, yeah. If you, you know what I'm saying? I just don't think that the stoning would ever make it to happen because not everybody's on the same. Of course not, Terrell. Of course it's not going to happen. I'm just saying, at this point, we might as well just gear up for the next one because turning it over to the government to figure out gun control, yeah, we're fucked. It's going to be another one. We're fucked. If they don't do nothing, it's going to be another one. It's just nothing but a bunch of, oh, all right, bet, let's put this gun law in place, but hold up. I'm not trying to give away my gun. So let's just stall on this. Let's think about this. Another one happens. It's just embarrassing to see all these politicians coming out. The people that had the power and have had power come out, especially Greg Abbott, the dude that's the governor of Texas. Nope. His words was like, wow, just get the fuck out of here, bro. Because this shit is on you. You did all that champion for guns. Now it happens again in Texas. Cause it happened in El Paso. Like, it's just wild. But R.I.P. to those kids, man, and those teachers. Um, and yeah, did you see them telling uh, Kingston Brunson that she needed to do a school shooter episode of uh, Abbott Elementary, and she was like, "No," type shit. And she said that she's been getting that a lot. People saying. It would help people realize. Nah. Yeah. And my thing about that is, again, as opposed to stuff really changing, we want to try and make examples through art. And I think that's already a, an issue with the film industry anyway. It's almost like we think people aren't seeing this shit. Y'all want her to take her comedy show and do a school shooter episode. I just personally think that that's a ridiculous request, period. I'm sorry. That just pissed me off, low-key. Like, why would... It's almost like people are saying that, like, like, oh, like, people don't know. Like, we are not all watching the same news. Oh, well, you know, this would tell people what? This would do what besides now taking our current day trauma that we can't fix and putting it in a show that we use to escape? Don't nobody watching Abbott Elementary want to see that shit. You know why? You can't play around it. Y'all can't be funny, you know? Right, and it's a comedy. That's why I said, yo, that's a ridiculous request. And to me, like, look at what happened with Atlanta. You went too far into that, and now nobody gives a fuck. And now nobody cares. Y'all know what's crazy? This is what I was going to say. I was just going to say it on a TL, but speaking of Atlanta, I haven't seen the TL lighting up for Atlanta. I haven't seen the TL lighting up for, what's the last uh, TV show that was on black? Snowfall. Snowfall and Atlanta did not light up the TL like Power Book did. Power Book and Tariq, Monet, all of that. We yeah. were talking. People enjoy them shows, shows a little bit more. I don't know Snowfall, what's up with Snowfall and... Snowfall had a trash season. Atlanta. Atlanta had a trash season. Uh, Euphoria had a trash season. We've had some good TV this year, and we've had bad TV. Speaking of good TV, Terrence don't watch, and whatever. 
But Better Call Saul, oh my God, that mid-season finale. I was in my room like, yo. And Mayans was good. It's some good TV out there. You just got to find it. I probably, I'm about to say it probably is. Oh, and I got finally got Terrence to start the staircase. And Candace got me to start that, believe it or not. You definitely did not get me to start it. You might have suggested it, but I got key, Candace to start that jump. Say what you want. Candace is the one that said, you need to watch this. And I said, all right, Candace, I'm going to go and watch it. Wow. The fruit I don't of- even remember you. Terrell watched so much shit, I don't even be knowing what he's wa- that he's watching shit. Staircase, man. HBO. You know. It's all right. I was going to ask you. This is a good question. It has nothing to do with politics, right? All right. Applause. Uh, I saw this on the TL. Wanda asks, do you think being a mama's boy is a red flag? Some of us that listen to this podcast, some of the people that might be on this podcast, uh, that might tune in, might either deal with somebody who's a mama's boy. Terrell is a mama's boy himself. Mm-hmm. He's the youngest. So I was just going to ask you, do you think that you being a mama's boy is a red flag? Or how could being a mama's boy be a red flag? Because some of these fellas out here might be a little, you know. Yeah. Uh uh-huh. I don't think that me being a mama's boy is a red flag because I feel like for me, mm-hmm. the I have the understanding that the relationship that I have with my girl versus the relationship that I have with my mom is 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 different, especially as a man. You know what I'm saying? As a 28 yeah. year old, like at some point, like I don't, I'm not coddled, and I think some people don't even know they're being coddled, and that's where it becomes a red flag. So I definitely think. Being a mama's boy, if a girl says that if he's a mama's boy, it's a red flag, it's because she's probably experienced yeah. either a guy or two who couldn't put anything before his mom. And I think people are going to say stuff like, well, you got to show me that you worth me putting you before my mom. Facts. It's like, yeah, but nah, your mother should be your mother and your girl should be your girl. And you got to understand that those women are treated the same but different. Yeah. Like, it's, it's love, it's respect, everything, but it's very different. The attention is different. And like let's think, say... Oh my, well, no, you got it. Like, you can't be... Like, I can understand if your mom need help with something or whatever. Cool. But I just feel like this is hard to explain because I've never had this issue. And I've been a mama's boy. I think that... But I've never had anybody tell me that. Me neither. I'm not really a mama's boy like that, I would say. I think that definite. I think if you having trouble figuring out what a mama's boy is, it's more so like somebody who talks to their mother every morning, every night, right? Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that, you know what I'm saying? But like, there's priority on that. Somebody that jump at everything that their mother say, or my mother need this, or mm-hmm. their mother influence their opinion. Yeah. For my fellas who might listen to this, you might find yourself being a mother's bo- a mama's boy. I wouldn't necessarily say that you yourself are a red flag because you could be put in a position where you've had to care for your mother a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? If your mother, like say your mother has anxiety real bad or something bad and she call you all the time, always hitting your phone, always, and you got to be there for her. Don't let a woman coming into your life that wants you to be all about her make you feel like that you caring for your mother makes you a red flag. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because I feel like there's a lot of women out here who are mama's girls we could very much say that that was a red flag. You know what I mean? But one thing that I think is important, I think a mama's is whatever is, is a red, could be a red flag for anybody. I think it all depends on the mom, though. That's what the, I'm saying. It all depends. No, I'm saying it all depends on. I think what makes it a red flag is when people moms be too involved and they have no control, or their mom talk crazy, or their mother just has too much input on the relationship. Because you such a mama's boy. Now she know everything about us. But she's also your mom, so she's always going to have your side. Yeah, like if you're that person that confides in your mom and you tell your mom everything. Yeah, man. It's just about how close you are. You have your mom to your relationship, you yeah. know? But for real, for real. Like I said, being a mama's... There's women, like, there's women out here who are also very much tied to their mother. Mm-hmm. And I think... I don't think that somebody being a mama's boy or mama's girl is a red flag because there's i think there's benefits i think i've dated women who are not mama's girls or are they daddy's girls they aren't daddy's girls and those those women believe or not be hard to like connect with i'm gonna keep it 100 with you Mm -hmm. only because it's like if you don't really if you're not vibing we're not saying that 
I'm not saying that they don't fuck with their parents at all. I'm just saying when you look at somebody and they're like not a mama's boy or they're not real close with their parents, it's almost like, damn, what's up with you and your parents to where y'all not close? You know? Yeah. Some people will look at you being close with your mother as you being a mama's boy. Just because they aren't close with their mother. Yeah. You know? Or their their mother or their father not in their life. You got your father, so they call you a daddy's boy or some shit like that. All I'm all I wanted to say in this in this topic, the way it was was posed, being a mama's boy is a red flag. I said, mm. Or the dude asked, and all the girls was under there was like, yes, yes, yes. I'm like, damn, like it's easy to say that being a mama's boy is a red flag because you hear mama's boy, you think about water boy. But it's that situation. That is the exact situation. That's the one they think about. And this is what you got to think about, too. A girl being a mama's girl or a girl confiding in her mom about a relationship is nowhere near as dangerous as a mama's boy or a daddy's girl. Yeah. Because the issue that comes with, like, you being a mama's boy or a girl being a daddy's girl is they look for their mom or dad and their significant other. Yeah. And a, pa- a father's love and a mother's Sometimes. That, yeah, that's what makes it toxic. Because it's two different ways you can explain it. Because when I said that, I was mainly talking about jumping at everything your parents say. And, like, there's some people who felt like, all right, you won't even say no to your mother. You won't even say, I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. Your mother call you and it's like, oh, I got to go leave, leave and see my mother. It's like, all right, bro, you're being there for your mother, but you also have to be there for your girl. Yeah. I, think, I, I think a little bit different about that. I think when women are talking about the red flags, in my opinion, I think it has everything to do with... People wanting, you're looking for your mom and me, and I'm not her. Or you're looking for your dad and me, and I'm not him. Yeah. And so it becomes toxic as fuck. Oh, my God. That's such a toxic situation. Nah, it is. And the only reason why I brought it up, mainly because I know that. I know how women are looking at it or how people look at that. I'm just saying there's people who are out here who actually are mama's boys, and it's just who you are. You born with just you, you, you were the only child, just you and your mom, your father not in your life. You're going to be a mama's boy regardless. You simply being a mama's boy doesn't always mean red flag. There's that some doesn't. red flaggers out there and there's some ones who are just. That's true. But I feel like that statement isn't about the ones that are just cool with their moms. It ain't about them at all. Because they don't show up as red flags. That's the tweet is as simple as, is, ma- is being a mama's boy a red flag? Yeah, Terrence, but that's I know specific- what he's talking about, but I'm just saying, I'm talking about all of it. Yeah, I know what but you're saying. I know what it's about, too. The good guys that take care of their mom, they ain't talking about them. They're talking about these toxic niggas that can't break away from their mother or their mother's too deep in the relationship. And trust me, I get that. I'm just saying mama's boys are out there and they're all not like that is what I'm saying. I know what the tweet is talking about, but if you was a regular mama's boy and you see that tweet, it's like, damn, being a mama's boy is a red flag? Oh, okay. I'm with you. But I just brought it up just to have that dialogue. I'm not a mama's boy. I wouldn't say that I'm a mama's boy. I'm not jumping at everything that you my a, mother say. You a daddy's boy? Nah. Not really a daddy's boy to the point where I'm like all up. Oh, you know what I'm saying? I think I got an even relationship with both my parents. I think it's a healthy relationship, but I'm I definitely not. I'm a, why I you get, call me a mama's boy? You the baby boy. What does that have to do with anything? Well, I didn't mean you was a mama's boy like the tweet. I was just saying you was a mama's boy just because. The mama's boy we've been talking about. I guess I, I guess I am a mama's boy. I don't know. Are you? I kind of go with the seasons. I'm a mama's boy. You used but to be a real big mama's boy. When I was little, yeah. yeah. You used to be a real big daddy's boy. You and y- y'all chocolate ice cream, motherfuckers. Just because I didn't like vanilla ice cream. <laughs> I got some hate. I got some small hate. Great. Brandy. Brandy the singer? Uh, yeah. What about it? So you y'all don't know if y'all have seen that Jack Harlow didn't know her and Ray J was brothers and sisters. Okay. Uh Brandy came out and was like, I'll smoke you on a track. Ooh. Right? You don't so know who? me. To Jack Harlow. It was funny though. Oh, okay, yeah. It's all love. I'll smoke you on your own track, Jack, type shit. She came out with a little rap on one of his songs, but she was rapping. It's like, all right, Brandy. Let's just relax a little bit. It's right. not a crime that Jack Harlow, who's 23 years old or 24, doesn't know that you was on Moesha 25 years ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What is he supposed... I mean, people are like, you want to be in this? And this is my thing. I'm not bailing out. I'm not bailing Jack Harlow out. 
All I'm gonna say is I didn't I didn't think that since he's a rapper he should know Moesha. I mean he should know Brandy and Ray J are siblings. I feel like that's a little bit of a reach. Y'all know I'm tough on people in the culture, but that is a reach. You can't expect a 20 year old to know. And then you rapping, it's like, all right, Brandy. Ain't he older than 20? He's like 23. Nah, he's definitely too. He might. He probably. Yeah, that's too young to know about Moesha, Brandy, or Brandy. But then again, people feel like if you're in the music industry, you need to know about Brandy. That's just what it is. You can never be an artist and come out and say you don't know about. He didn't say he didn't know her. He said he didn't know her and Ray J were her brothers. And Ray J was brothers. Yeah, you're right. And honestly, it's like, damn, these motherfuckers be young though. There's certain people that are that are young that have no idea who Ray J even fucking is. For real. Because who is Ray J? People don't even know Ray J had a whole career. Right. They just look at him as, oh, yeah, he had a sex tape with Kim Kardashian. Ray J had a whole career. But it's like, if you weren't there for the, you know what I'm saying, danger, she smashed the homies. If you wasn't there for that Ray J era, when you was, look, you was seven years old when that came on. Hey, look, there's people in the world that don't know that the save button is really a floppy disk. Damn, yeah. That little. They just think, oh, yeah, that's the save button. Nah, that's actually a floppy disk. Then there's a, uh, damn, what was I going to say? Oh, this is perfect. Do you remember the uh, the poke button on Facebook? Shit was legendary and before his time. I was just going to say that. The poke button on Facebook, you add somebody as a friend and you could just poke them. That just like low-key getting their attention. You don't got to send a message. You don't got to say nothing. You could just poke them. And if they poke you back, then you send a message. They need to bring that back. If it's me, I thought poking people was always weird. You ain't think it was weird? I'm looking at it now. I will poke a couple shorties. It's I will weird. poke a couple shorties. Look, you just go to their page, poke. If they poke you back, then you can send a message. That would lead, that would alleviate a lot of useless DMs that go nowhere. If you leave a poke on, on shorty page and she can poke you back, then you know, all right, bet there's some interest. I'm about to, whatever. It's almost like they should ask stuff. Like, it's almost like, I feel like dating apps have that aspect where you can like get somebody attention whatever but that's a dating app facebook had that shit on your page facebook had dope ass first time thing you ask somebody as a friend if it was a birthday you know their birthday you, you could can see if they somebody was, you see their relationship status if they were single if they was taking you and wasting no time you can see if they was online now or offline you y'all forget that when you see shorty online you like let me think of what to say. Let me think of what to say. Look, and then you see the joint go green, bl- brown, offline or something offline. You like, damn, I'm going to uh-huh. wait till tomorrow. I'm going to wait till she on later. You remember the little, man, like this for a rate. Those, <laughs> were the, those were the best times of social media. Like this. I told Terrell, this is my favorite one. You know, you know my favorite one. The why, what's up? That's my favorite one. <laughs> like this for why, what's up? Terrell, like my pit, uh, like it. And then this is what you do. <laughs> you supposed to end every tweet with "Why, what's up?" Like somebody asked you about him. So if Terrell liked the message or like the status, I put "Like this for Why, what's up?" I'd be like, "Who Terrell? The one with the the one with the shades? The the cool ass one that, that got my back forever? The cool ass nigga that get all the bitches? The one that that whatever whatever? Well, yeah, I know him. Why, what's up? <laughs> I fuck with that. And I was telling Terrell we used to say some wild shit back then. Like if it was a shorty, we'd be like, "Oh, who Ashley?" The one that's team pretty? The one that's team follow back? The one that's team... <laughs> Did y'all used to do that with the teams? She definitely team pretty. Definitely team follow back. Definitely team bad. <laughs> I know her. Why, what's up? That shit used to be funny. Yo, shit. that was the best one. Y'all don't know. when. Nah, this is when it got real. When it was like, like this for a group rating. Oh, yeah. Where they put you on Instagram. one of your... They go on one of your pictures and put that shit in their group chat. The and most humbling shit ever. That's back in the era where Instagram was all pics. Uh-huh. And first of all, they got to go and pick the pic off your page that they sent. And they used to be doing you dirty. That yeah. was the first time. That was when people got humbled with the shit on their page. They yeah. see your worst pic in a group chat and girls be like, um, three, three, two, <laughs> ew, ew, <laughs> I'm not even rating. <laughs> Look. <laughs> You'll be sitting there sick as fuck like, why she ain't picked the one with the heli? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, nigga, this is on your page. Yeah, this is your <laughs> shit. That was humbling, bro. Nah, that shit humbled you. Because for real, your heart was racing. You, you said, fuck, I'm going to leave it. Like, she ain't going to like, she ain't going to rate me. 
You fuck around and refresh your TL and see mm-hmm. your picture. Um, five, six, five. And before these, before the young kids was doing the smash or pass, yeah, we was like eighteen too. Remember we used to do like this for a, like, like this for a smash or pass. Mm-hmm. Remember the uh, it was like like this for a uh, or what was it? Was it fuck Mary kill? You be sick as hell when you only get to marry. It's like damn, I can't. Smash. <laughs> that was the days when we was really focused on shit like that, and yeah, it was we like really was. that's all we really had. Like this for truth, for truth is. Yeah, you know, tr- truth is we fell off. Those would have like, yeah, be real. Yeah. <laughs> truth is, I felt like you were dissing me like shit, but you cool people. I guess. I guess. Then you hit a private message. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's how we would communicate back then. Like dope little games like that. Yeah. Well, we'll be dope. Now I feel like social media isn't about. You see that? Every- that back then was all about being. You know what I'm saying? More social, it like was, connecting yeah. with the people that follow me. As to where these days, it's more like a. Uh, Look where I've been. Look what I'm doing today. And really, nobody gives a and fuck about anybody's opinion anymore. And everything is sexualized. Everything is sexualized. Dang it, yeah. And think about this. We used to do smash or pass, and a girl would smash or pass or, or the like or for what was up. Oh, we had all that shit. Now, it's basically just smash or pass. You have you seen the YouTube videos where it's a line of women, a line of these young girls. You can yes. tell they all 17 to 20. Mm-hmm. Well, 20, 17 to 22, and there's a host, and then there's a contestant, well, the guy, yeah. and he walks past, looks at these girls, and just says, pass, smash, turn around. It's like, God damn, this shit is, y'all some kids out here. Yes, man. Nah, fuck it. Pass. Turn around. Do a twirl. Pass. Pass. The girl always look real vulnerable when, they come, when he come up. Yeah, it just, I don't, I don't see how people watch them drinks. Pass. The new generation <laughs> is fucked. You know nah, how I knew they was fucked? I forget who I was talking about. I forget who I was talking to, but they said their third grader was on watching porn in class. And I said, and when I was young, we had to get on that fucking fat ass computer in the basement. Yeah. Open a private browser. If you can, I don't even remember how hey, we you did was that in shit. the basement in the back room. I remember that. In the basement. Y'all remember the videos where the real ones that watch our uh <laughs> Uh huh. You had to. Del- <laughs> you had to. That room back there was where we had our computer. Me and Terrell was going down the steps and going in that room. And and look though, do you remember you had to delete your browse history every night? Yeah, because everybody used that computer. <laughs> <laughs> the next person that go online be like, hold on, I remember. I remember forgetting to delete mm-hmm. my browsing history. And my mother done been down there, and I go down there and see what she was on. Uh huh. It's almost like, look, even Ooh. with the staircase that Joey was watching, it's like women are completely oblivious to the shit men look at on <laughs> computer. They just get on here. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Nah, but he was wild. Nah, he was on some wild <laughs> shit. But uh, that also brings me to this, bro. I was sitting at the uh, Panera the other day, because I don't know if y'all know, you order your meal at Panera. They'll tell you your meal going to be ready at 110. You in that joint 115 looking dumb as shit looking around. They bringing bags out. You like, oh, that's not me. That ain't me. Uh, it ain't nothing wrong when you think when you waiting for people and, and it's like, it's a weird feeling that I get there. Like this lady was like, that's me. Look at her, look at her food. And I was like, girl, you pressed this shit. Me really just mad because my food <laughs> haven't came out. I just don't like being in that situation. I don't like being in a situation where we're all waiting for our food. It's just yeah, a weird situation. It. Let me, That's me. But let me throw you a curveball. I don't fuck with this. You in the drive thru right? Yeah. You at the first window. Somebody is in front of you at the second window. Yeah. You see the person at the second window hand a bag to the person in the car. You see via, you see their shadow look in the bag. Then they say, this ain't mine. Give it back to the, to the person. Yeah. They take that bag back. Then... You see them hand, look, they take it back and do this and hand them a different bag. Then you pull up and they go to hand you that bag. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know how you act like they to hand you something burning? Oh. <laughs> I know you ain't about to give me that bag that you just put in his hand. Did that you he know that just ruffled through? Right. If they all, I, y'all need to make my shit up. I'm going to be in, par- in parking spot number one. <laughs> Even the motherfuckers that work there don't be using gloves. Remember the nigga, me and Terrell, was, we was at McDonald's, rough night, whatever. He had our fries, like this nigga's thumbs deep in our fry joint. <laughs> Burger. I said, yo, <laughs> I hope this motherfucker don't got COVID. But look. No, nah, but that's funny as shit because a lot of people 
wouldn't even think about that. Nah, this man just put his whole boogery hand in my uh in my whole shit. Nah. Yeah, I don't nah, know where his that. hand been. I want fresh food. I hate when people do that. Like I remember this lady. Last time I went to the McDonald's, this lady handed back the you know the the, the paper small fry come in a paper bag. Uh-huh. She handing that back. I'm like, oh my god! Like you might as well not even be here for real, for real. You paying for it though? That's like they going to Waffle House. Ass fries. It's like going to Waffle House and complaining. It's flies flying all around here. I want our food for free. Oh, you must never been here before. Yeah. You know, our table Wait, wasn't. Wa- it's water spots on the spoon. You know, you at the Waffle it's House, right? Waffle House though. Like. How dare you have so much fucking elegance or whatever you call it, <laughs> and you at McDonald's. If I worked there, I'd be like, girl, you press the shit. You work, you come into McDonald's, though. Like, never let a nigga say, okay, but you working at McDonald's, but you're working at McDonald's. That motherfucker is not that far behind you if they're eating McDonald's. For real, for real. <laughs> and I'm not shitting on people that eat McDonald's. There's millionaires that eat McDonald's, but still. You know what I mean? Like, don't ever play with me. Yeah. I would tell somebody. You handing a small fry back? If I were at the McDonald's, I'd be shitting on everybody that tried to shit on me. Right. You're getting a double quarter pounder, and you're already overweight. You're right. definitely about to be dead. I don't eat none of this shit. Only, I'm vegan. I just work here. I just work here. Only thing I eat here is the apple slices. <laughs> or the oatmeal, which is fire. Which is heat. I remember I posted some oatmeal online, and everybody was like, this nigga's eating McDonald's oatmeal. And I'm like, okay. oh, y'all haven't had it then. Yeah, you don't know. Same thing with the Panera sandwich. And that Wendy's chili for a while. Back to the Panera situation, because I didn't want to switch this to food. I was trying to stay on the topic we were talking about. You were talking about waiting for food, right? Yeah, I was in the Panera. I was waiting for food. But look, it was this girl. She was sitting over there. She was eating, right? She was fine, too. And I was like, you know what? We both, I mean, I'm waiting for my food, you know? I should, I should just walk over there and sit with her. You know what I'm saying? Fuck it, you know? I'm already doing shit in my life right now. I said I could use some, some, some spontaneity. Spontaneity, sorry. Spontaneity. I saw her and I said, you know what? Damn, that age is low-key dead. The age of seeing a chick sitting by herself and being able to walk up to her and say, is this seat taken type shit? Mm-hmm. I think that day is over with, bro. Yeah. Only reason why is because two things. If I go over there, she's going to feel there's going to be this fake ass animosity because we got all of this bullshit going on with people you don't know coming up to you. This girl's getting abducted. We got women missing. I get it. So For now sure. you coming up. To where it's kind of like, damn, I'm just trying to enjoy my lunch, but now I got this motherfucker coming up. Exactly. Unless they look inviting. And what I mean is that if y'all make eye contact, yeah, and it's there, like, you know, you can tell. When a girl look at you a little too long, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it take a little longer to break the eye contact. But my thing is she didn't look inviting. Oh, okay, yeah. And I'm just saying, in, in the movies or back in the day, she didn't have to look inviting. You could go over there and they'd be like, I was just sitting, she was just sitting there, whatever, and I just walked up to her. Yeah. And I feel like that still could happen, but I was in the Panera and I'm like, damn, look, we just had the, the shooting happen. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not about to go up to nobody in this age. I told myself, you better off finding somebody on Instagram. This is the crazy thing about this time. I think you're better off finding somebody on IG and hitting them on IG. It's just more commonplace too, yeah. They're more comfortable. You know? Yeah. I feel like I would truly make a girl uncomfortable at this point, walking up to her uninvited. If I'm not in a situation where it's like a public, we had a lounge, yeah. I yeah. felt like I would be bothering her. You know? For sure. Even though it might be, I mean, be on my, some nice shit. I just feel like that day of, because of social media, yeah. That, those days of going up and actually poking somebody in real life, it died low-key way back then. And it's been dying ever since. Like, that human, real human interaction. Hey, yo, how you doing? That's, if you're not in a public setting, those bookstore conversations you hear about, those coffee shop, Metaretta. Nah, man, you can still get that off, Terrence. You man, just gotta be. You know, I, you know I met somebody at the gym that way, but, like, come on. Now, this is what I would say. I say I see a girl at, at the Panera, right? Yeah. Sitting down and she eating a... Uh, Let's say she eating a half sandwich, half sandwich. This nigga don't know the menu. She right, she's sitting down eating a uh, the take chicken sandwich. If you haven't trash had it, you need sandwich. to try it. Trash. Excuse the barbecue me? chicken is way better. The take is trash. I tried it. It's trash. You tried it with the Parmesan chips? Oh, you talking about the new joint? I thought you was talking about the other joint. The uh, it's a different one. I told y'all he didn't know the menu. That that that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that sandwich that you made me get was dry as fuck. And I got everything on it. The Poblano, whatever. 
It was it was Terrell dry. did not eat his sandwich for hours. Um, that's not true. I ate it as soon as you got home, but I was sick as fuck when that when I drink. Uh, remember when I was, uh mm-hmm. my blood pressure was up. Right, this nigga's taste buds wasn't even working. But look though, let's say she eating a, uh, the chicken sandwich. Yeah. Let's say she um got whatever. You can still on some fly shit. Not go up to her and is this seat taken type shit, but you can still compliment and skate. I was giving this. I went to a uh, a mansion pool thing situation this uh past weekend, and my boy Carlos, who I met out there, I literally met him out there. He was telling me about this girl that he had seen at the bar, and he was like, "I found her on IG because I remember we was talking about it, and mm-hmm. I said I was gonna get it from her, and I ended up finding her, but I don't really know how to what I should say in the DM." And he was thinking about all this different shit to say, and I'm going to say all of this. And I was like, bro, this is what you do. And it's the same thing I would do with Shorty and Panera. You drop a little something off, and then you skate. Yeah. Because you just got to go on the fact that if you see her sitting down at the table in this Panera, she's probably going to be sitting down in this Panera again another day. Yeah. You just got to play your cards right. So if you go up to Shorty sitting down, eating or whatever, let's say she got her computer and whatever, and you say, yo, I just want to let you know that X, Y, Z, you can say whatever the fuck you want. And she might say, oh, thank you. You know what you say? Have a good one. All right, but you leave, Terrell. You know damn well you don't got to tell me that. I low-key told you this that that's not the for game. you. No, but I'm this saying. for them. All right. But what I was saying is going up to somebody and joining them is basically what I was talking about is dead. All, ah. you, all you can do these days, it feels like, if they're, if they're not inviting, if they're inviting, then yeah, you good. But I felt like these days you'd be better off, like you said, giving a short comment and then dipping. Right. You ain't say that though. Trying you to pull get on IG and go in the, the DM. If nah. you want to have a combo, I'm saying, pulling the chair and saying, "Is this seat taken?" I okay, feel yeah. like that she might even let you sit down, but I feel like she would be more uncomfortable there than you leaving the short message and then seeing her on the gram and breaking the ice that way. Then the next time you see him, you know what I'm saying? But then. Even though it's, tra- it's trash, I get it. I'm just saying, how do you feel about when the girls get, because people do that all the time. They be like, I'm, I seen this man in person. He didn't say anything to me. And then I get I get home and he DMs me. It's different. They don't like that. Nah, if we doing what you said, if we leave in the small comment and then you jet, hitting them on IG is not bad at all. That's Low true. key, they looking for you. That's true. You know what I'm saying? When I said something to that shorty in the gym, I had my mask on. Mm-hmm. I just said, whatever, did. Feel me? Works. Oh, didn't work? Whatever. But I swear to God, you say something, put yourself in a mindset. At least they know who you are, even if you're in the gym, bro. Like, you see a shorty come in the gym. Hey, how you doing? What's your name? Ashley. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? My name is Brad. Whatever. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you know, I go to the gym. I be seeing you. So, you know, just you know, whatever. Shine. Yeah. And I'm whatever. moving on. Now, you know her name. Guess what you're going to do the next time you see her? Get. You're not going to say shit. You're not going to say anything. Why not? You want to know why? Because now you look like a pressed ass nigga. You know? You can't even say what's good, Ashley. You got Ashley name, right? When you get Ashley name, she, think about it. Ashley, right? Nah. And you can't even do that. Next time you see her, peace sign, wave. Oh, yo, what's up? Don't say her name. I know you got her name. Do not say her name. Trust me. This is how you know. Oh, yo, what's up? Because now I know your name, but that doesn't mean now I'm going to come and remind you that you told me your name. I'm not going to do that. I'm I know you. Say, You're from the party. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm with you, though. That is actually you know what I'm saying? Shit. So my thing it's is, like, you say what's up, right? Then she think, okay, well, you know, I, I, he asked me what my name was, whatever. Then later, down some other line, when you get by her, if you're a buyer, yo, yo, what's up, Ashley? Yo, what's up? Yeah. Oh, he do what's remember that? my name. You know what I'm saying? That's me. That's play. You niggas, you niggas can't get information and then just run off with it real fast. But that's told, just some other shit. No, nah, that's actually a great point, though. And that's exactly what I told my boy Carlos. Because he had met Shorty at the bar. He yeah. was about to send a hell of a DM. Yo, I was thinking maybe we could. Nah, I said, look, just because mm. she did art. I said, look, compliment the art. Yo, I didn't even know you did art. You didn't tell me that. That shit is dope. She's going to say thanks. That's it. Go back to the bar. That you know she bartend at. And then, yeah. and then let her be like, that's the dude that I... You know what I'm saying? You just got to put yeah. your cards right. Don't waste your time when... This is a good thing for the fellas to hear too. 
Don't let, I'm not trying to be vulgar. Don't let your sexual tension, or how do you even say this? I want, I want to say, it's like saying don't think with your dick without saying that. But like, mm-hmm. you know how you can see a shawty and you be like, damn, you know what? And this is just real rap. I will fuck this shit out of this joint. <laughs> <laughs> I can see me hitting this from the back. But look, like remember we was talking about shawty might do this, this, and that. Things you're not really cool with. Mm-hmm. You hit shawty up. Once you get to know her, you don't even fuck with her. You know what I mean? But you done said all of this shit because you was thinking about, uh huh. you know what I'm saying? Like your man sending that long message, maybe we should, we should do all of this. You don't even really know her yet. Mm-hmm. Thinking with your dick. Now, once you get to know her, you like, damn, I done said all of this shit. I don't even fuck with shawty like that. Yep. That's when you run yourself into that brick wall. That's when you you doing show, shorties dirty. That's why you gotta play your cards right before you give That's so true. much. You gotta make sure you fuck with her. Like you said, your man should have no problem going back to that bar if he really want that joint. If right. not, don't waste your time on IG sending messages. Right. And then if you are just on some fuckboy shit and you just try to find a good lay, yeah, just be upfront with it and don't try to spin because that's not player. It ain't. And that girl said on Twitter, she said, she said, niggas need to know that if you're going to get me, it's a thousand niggas trying to get me. You got to be different. You know? That's a fact. And a lot of the dudes was like, fuck that. You got to be different. I mean, what you coming with? But low key, you supposed to, we supposed to take that heat. That's the competition we need right there. That's good info, info right there. These chicks do be having not a thousand, but like it's you versus six or seven, bro. It's you versus like mm-hmm. six or seven. Yeah, y'all that be on Hinge, look, you got like eight likes. You know how many likes she got? No bullshit. Huh. This is my thing. The DMs, you got three DMs, to her like 20. So the you can't be right. in a DM saying the same old shit. I've, I've given you guys this, this, this advice before. You think she fine? Guess what? So do a thousand niggas that are You're saying so the same fine. Thing. And Thanks. it be old niggas. It be people, fathers, granddads. I would love to take you out and spend more, spending and spending and spending and spending on them. I'm getting it. No bullshit. It be, it be, it be, yeah. It's competition out there, but fuck it, man. We living our best life. Nine's up. I got a question for you. How old is too old for braces? Never too old. To me, once you pass 30, that's it. No, hell nah. If you don't get, if, if, you might not make sense. Is for key is for developing teeth. That's not true. He's wrong. I feel like you get to a certain age where you a grown ass man and you getting braces. You're wrong. I used to fuck with this shawty in New York. Love her to death. Still, uh, who was in into like dental? Like she was dental. You know what I'm saying? She was a dental assistant, about to be like legit in the chair with the shit with the sucky joint. So she know. <laughs> Bro, she would probably tell you you're wrong. I mean, of course, you can get braces at any age. I know this dude, right? I was on LinkedIn. The dude that, this dude was on there was like, just got my braces. He's like 50. Dog. Nigga, you about to lose them teeth in the next 10 years. I was going to say that people don't realize that braces is expensive as fuck. They are. You might not make enough money until 30 to really get braces. Nah, that's true. And when you get up there, people are going to probably tell you to get veneers. i seen this dude with these white veneers, something, something pastel, something white veneers. And I said, damn, them joints look dope. But low key, his teeth look fake as shit. Nigga was smiling, teeth look fake as shit. I don't give a damn. I want that. I, I want look, the chill joints, though. I be looking at my teeth sometimes, and I'm like, damn, low key, my shit yellow. You ever look at the teeth, and you're like, damn, that shit yellow. Yo, you wear a white shirt, and you take that pic in the wrong light. But you know they say if your teeth yellow, then that means your teeth got a little bit of uh, a little bit of healthiness. I don't know if y'all know that yellowing is natural for your teeth. Your teeth should not be pearly white. Man, fuck that. That means you ain't got no type of enamel on your teeth. Your teeth weak as shit, low key. If your teeth are all white, pearly white like a shirt, that's not natural. It is, yes, it is. It's people that have not. perfectly white teeth. But look, it's people that having have wh- yellow teeth is more healthy. I'm saying right. yellowing on your teeth. Is healthy. You should have a white with a small, very slight tint of yellow. Terrell, look at these motherfuckers that have pearly white teeth. Either veneers, fake, or you have no enamel on your tooth. And if you got veneers, it's not even really a tooth. I remember they were saying, take a lemon slice. And they was like, that. you stripping all that enamel right off. You're going to drink a cold cup of water and be in pain. <laughs> Ooh. 
I'm gonna give it this one day. Y'all gonna see me brand new smile. Who this? Brand new nine. Did you hear about the monkey pox? Man, I just seen that one picture of the dude with the bubbled up hand. Is yeah. this a real thing? It is 100 percent a real thing. And if that shit happen, I'm getting a vaccine. Nah, 100. All of the, all everybody that's all of the brothers and the you know they say, hey, look, they, I don't think we should do it. We done held out for the other one, but I'm getting that one if it come. Everybody have to get it if 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 if, we, if niggas gonna start turning into. <laughs> Yeah. What am I turning to? <laughs> Think about it. I'd rather wake up with a cough. Hopefully this shit'll go away. <clears throat> then wake up and you starting to turn. You like the nigga from uh Game of Thrones that got touched by the man? Uh, the stone man? Yeah. <laughs> you looking at your wrist? Oh shit. <laughs> I can help who's next. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why you at work? <laughs> you at work and your shit bubbling up. This a scar. This a scar. <laughs> Monkey pox. <laughs> <laughs> and we playing, but. Man, I don't want that shit. Keep me far away from it. I'm knocking all types of wood. Mimi, wake your ass up. Sick of her sleeping during the pod. What the fuck is she supposed to do? Sit up and watch? Be entertaining. Get up and walk around the couch like you like doing. She don't give a fuck about that. Um, let me see. Let me see. Let me see. That's all you had for monkey pox? Yeah, I didn't have anything else to say. It's just, it's just been happening. You see, they said the median household rent. Is reaching an all-time high of two thousand dollars average for the median rent, and I don't know if y'all notice, well, I don't know if you notice, but gas is still going up. It's not like it didn't like hit a, a high and stay at that high. It's like getting worse. I was gonna say they just said that gas prices will be above six dollars come August, and that's for us not in California, y'all. Yeah, not for California. Y'all already up there. Y'all gonna be an eight. And what does that mean for us just playing premium? Eight? This is what I was going to ask you. Are we entering a new age where gas is just this expensive? Like, okay, yeah, they said, well, in the other war, the inflation. All right, bet. So when can we expect this to go down? Or is this gonna be what it is? Are ties cut? Look, are we gonna get back to good gas prices because somebody wins this war? Uh, like, I don't, know. I don't know. It's looking like we about to have high gas prices forever, y'all. Honestly, Mach E. They said that we're, I remember Obama in 2008, I think. Yeah. No, in, in, in 2012, he said that they had a, uh, there was a, a plan for all of the world's cars to be electric by 2025. It's already 2022, and motherfuckers, is, I just bought a car last year. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I'm definitely getting a Tesla, y'all. I'm, I, I'm not going to be around for the gas thing. Man, I've been hearing about Charleston. Teslas blowing up. Man, not blowing up, but like a cat, somebody caught fire on the inside and didn't, didn't let people out. All right, then let me talk, let's talk about some of these other cars that have gas problems. Terrell. Like what they do. I'm talking about the Tesla being electric and nah. your shit not working. And now, but people taking those one little cases and trying to make it seem like, yeah, them Teslas blow up. They had a software update, and they put out this article that said, they're all recalled. It was a software update. They had to go in to get an update. That's the weird thing, though. Technology and updates, and technology working when it wants to. <laughs> My door's supposed to be opening. <laughs> Look, you know, hot in here. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Motherfucking car you? saying no, and it's not a manual let me out. Y'all yeah. know, know why y'all people be thinking like that. You got a whole hot-ass oil and, and engine <laughs> right in front of you in your car. This is what y'all thought. Y'all thought the robot takeover was going to look like our robot is really just going to be Teslas <laughs> driving y'all ass around. Look, all the Teslas all meet up in the same location. Nobody wanted to go in. <laughs> they let all of y'all out and close the door, and it's like hyenas will sit out there. You know what I'm saying? They can, <laughs> they can pick us off in some weird ways, no bro. Bullshit. But I'm 100% getting one. Dog, what if your Tesla didn't open, right? And it just went to like an all red screen. That would be terrible. <laughs> and look, it just drove you around and it pulled up to another Tesla. And the people in the other Tesla were like, <laughs> <laughs> and these two motherfuckers communicating. <laughs> I should have kept gas with me riding by with the gas car. Fucking up the ozone. Damn no bullshit. But look, I don't know what's up with the gas prices, y'all. If you're not paying for gas and you're getting on that school bus. You wonder why that bus was late? You wonder why the, the school bus driver pulling off on your motherfucking ass? I don't know if y'all ever dealt with that. Mm -hmm. right, Our bus drivers didn't used to wait. 
This is the biggest bullshit your girl will try to sell you. I'm, I'm, and we've been talking crazy on this. We haven't had a big crazy news week. The biggest lie that you will see ladies tell. And, and ladies, y'all can tell me I'm wrong if you want. I'm going to give a damn. Fellas, don't believe this. When your girl says, I like fat asses too. If you see one, let me know. I want to look too. That is the most bullshit statement ever. <laughs> Never believe that shit. I seen a TikTok where a girl was like, look, you see the TikTok with a girl looking at a fat ass and then dab her dude up? Stop it. Yeah. Stop the bullshit. Yeah. Why are y'all doing that? Why do y'all do that? Do you think that's going to make you sound cool? You think we're going to fuck with that? Oh, yeah, I got a girl. I can. Look, if we go to the strip club, shit, I want to go too. I want to see strippers too. Nobody wants to go to the fucking strip club with your ass. Sorry. <laughs> I don't want to go to the strip club with my girl. What am I yeah. there for? That's like going to... A party and your mother got to sit in the back or some shit. You feel me? Yeah. I'm not trying to dance with shorty and then you right here looking at me. <laughs> I don't need none of you here. I don't need that. I want to leave this and say, you know what? I had my wild night. I'm going home to shorty. So what does a wild night consist of? Because you you, you ain't going to be in there doing your girl. I'm not going to be in there smashing uh, strippers. Y'all know I don't even really fuck with the strip club like that. That's something. That's some place that I just... It's oh, so you going to be getting danced on by the strippers? You wanna get a lap dance? If I were to go to a strip club, I would never want my girl to be there if I were to actually. But so if your girl don't go, you won't get a lap dance. 100 percent I might get something. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. Your girl go to a male strip club. Do you? I don't even want to see the videos. I don't want to see no pictures, posts, nothing. You put your page on private. I'm good. You cool with her getting a uh do your thing? A as lap dance from, from John with the with the foot as long. As he ain't nah, he doing the yeah, that is what he doing. Nah, that's see, what I'm not doing that. The shorty gonna put the titties in your face. He can put the oily chest in the better stomach than you. All right, bet, fellas. You want to be there for that? Oil them up. Oil them up. <laughs> what are we going to do? You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be there at all. That's why I don't get why she want to be there. <laughs> I've never understood that. Even going back to my original point. If I see a fat ass, let me know. I want to look. I mean, hey, what? I Until Shardy with a fat ass is in my DMs. I thought you liked fat asses. You feel me? Oh, I mean, if we see one. Nah, see, let me tell you, fellas. You'll walk yourself into the argument where you said, where you sitting there talking about shit that you thought was one thing. Nah, bro, don't do it. It's a lie. Don't no girl want to see you looking at nobody ass but they ass. I don't care if your girl got a, got a, uh, a small ass. Fuck that. She wants you to admire that little ass. And that's what you should do. Don't be out here. Hey, look, fellas. We still got, we still gonna get our looks off on the slick. But you ever, you ever look at an ass and then see your girl look at you to see if you looked and then she's think, hmm, he didn't. And you think, hmm, I already got the look out anyway. You missed it. Look, you <laughs> duck too late. You too, too late. <laughs> you too late. <laughs> I see, oh, that ass? I seen that ass when we was right by the hot dogs, man. That most, just made it, made it this way. The most toxic shit ever. You know what I'm talking about, how but girls I'm do that, though, right? Yeah. What about your girl? Is your girl that tight? No. If I see a fat ass shit, let me know. Uh-uh. I, I feel like that shit is fake. But then again, there are some people that like to do threesomes and shit and girls that are bisexual and you yeah, know what yeah. So it is still kind of like, all right. Speaking of girls, uh, her on my shirt. Y'all see this shirt? I got this shirt from Target. I wore this because I said, fella, y'all might need, you know what I'm saying? I'm end up cutting this joint, wearing it to the gym. This is a Grammy Award winning artist right here. So you're going to be doing... uh. Hip thrust with a her shirt on. Come I don't on. do hip thrust. Anyway. Booty gains. Shout out her. And guess what, y'all? Y'all know I still haven't heard that LMA. Dying. And I'm in a doghouse. She won't even answer my phone calls. I said, you know what? I got, uh, you know what I'm saying? A, you know, different type of schedule. I'm going to listen to it. I haven't heard it. Give me that. I heard DMF you. <laughs> Give you what? The uh, oh, this. Oh, but God. yeah, y'all. I'm really lacking like shit on my r and B. I I can't even lie. That Kendrick Week took a lot out of me. This bitch ass nigga, too. I don't know if he wants to listen to the into the Ella, but I might have just listened by myself because I don't feel right listening by myself. I feel like y'all should see that reaction. I mean, hey, I'm, I mean, I'm with whatever. I'm Ella. I'm, I'm with whatever. Did you want to talk about Kendrick doing a uh, 195? We could. I don't know if you had anything to say. I knew you were going to have some smart shit to say. I don't really have anything to say about it. But 295. I just don't like how all the J. Cole. I don't like how a lot of J. Cole fans. Specific J. Cole fan pages. 
I was minding my fucking business. Nobody was even thinking about numbers. When the numbers first dropped, that he dropped 288 or 286, 282, or whatever, all the J. Cole fans was in my mention saying, oh, yeah, but your boy couldn't outsell this top five that he talked about. He couldn't even outsell Cole. Cole did this, Cole did that. And I'm like, yo, who was talking about numbers like this? Nobody. I, I, and Terrell the Kendrick was talking fans, about numbers. The Kendrick fans. Dog. The Kendrick fans. When Kendrick's 100%. album dropped, it was fire, and we said it was fire. Nobody was thinking, oh, this album's about to do. Let me tell Chances you, Kendrick it. don't put out albums that are that are... Kendrick's not going to put an album out that y'all niggas about to go back. So y'all going to go back and be spinning that joint like y'all was spinning and pushing Pete. Terrence, y'all going to be spinning that joint like y'all was spinning Future's album. Terrence, you're, you're not. They, yes, they will. And, it's, and they are. But this is the thing. You don't be having the conversations on Twitter that I have. You don't be seeing the that doesn't mean that, that I see. I saw hundreds of mentions, hundreds, bro. Terrence, I had hundreds of Kendrick fans. When I was tweeting, and everybody was calling me stupid, that's why I started mentioning certain people back. But when I was tweeting about Kendrick doing, I said, I got Kendrick doing 350K, 400. People was calling me stupid saying he was, there was a Kendrick fan saying he was going to do 600K, saying that he was going to do 750. He might, that girl, I forget her name, he's going to do, a, might do a million. Please. I don't but see. now they trying to now those same Kendrick fans are saying who cares who cares nah y'all was talking big shit. This is my thing numbers in this situation I told you really, and I'm a Kendrick fan. This, it seems like the times are changing. Like if you thought Kendrick was about to do 600k, you're tripping. This nigga haven't even rapped for five years. He didn't come out with. But that's why people were saying he was because he been gone for so long. And do you think people really not gonna want to stream if he been gone for? Okay. To me, like all of the all of the, the the different fans who was hitting me, oh Kendrick didn't do this. Like, look at the albums though. Kendrick already put out the best album of the top of this top five, for sure. I think he for sure did. I think Mr. Morale is a better album than Certified Lover Boy. I think Mr. Morale and Big Step is a better album than Donda. And I'm a Kanye fan. Y'all know I love Donda. Yeah, but Ooh. I think Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is a better album than Donda. And that's ah. a that and look. The only thing that would make me say, okay, yeah, you're right, is Donda does have a better listening. You can it listens better, for sure. Way more songs. But low key as an album, Donda was an event. Donda is Donda is better. I'm sorry. Donda's better to me. I love Kanye West. I don't think But I listening to Donda, I don't think that I felt the same way I did listening to Mr. Morale and Big Steppers. Terrence, we have your reaction on camera. And I was re- and, 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 and what are you saying? And Donda was incredible. Donda was a better listening experience. But I think, like, this is what, I, this is what, I was, this is what I'm talking about. Like, I think the album, the art that he put out stands taller. We're not talking about, oh, which album has more songs that I can go and play. And I think that's where everybody gets hemmed up in, the, in, the, in, in this process. Where it's like, oh, well, you know what? He didn't put nothing out that I can go and listen to for real, for real. So it's mid. And I'm like, yo, the more that I listen to that Kendrick Lamar album, the more I pick up. Yeah. It was not like that for me and Donda. It was so much music that it was like, damn, I didn't even really pay attention to this joint. But let's keep it a hundo. Kanye West is great at making music, but he is not one with words. Not anymore. Never really have been, but what? Was something about to die? No, I'm thinking about that motherfucking album. Go keep, keep going. Mr. Morale or Donda? Donda. Donda was great, and you trying to make it seem like I'm saying it's bad, and I'm not. I, I, I know you're not saying it. I'm, I'm saying, saying I like Mr. Morale and Big Steppers because of the messaging in it, the message I received from the 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 storyline of it. You know what I'm saying? Visually, I felt like I can see that album. Donda seemed like. I feel like Donda has so many special moments in the album. It does. That Kendrick's album was great. I think Kendrick has the best discography of all of the top five rapping right now outside of Me too. Kanye. In, in terms of complete projects, yeah. Kendrick's discography is tough to beat because he has like he has never taken really an L. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But... When I'm comparing Mr. Morale by itself to like Donda, I don't know. The bad thing that I, the reason why I struggle with putting Donda over Mr. Morale and Big Steppers is because 
We would low-key be lying if we said Donda was a hip-hop album. It's more like this album of great music. Nah, but it has, it has, it's, it's mostly rapping. It was, it was a lot of gospel. It's like very, I guess you can call it hip-hop. And like I said, you've seen how Future used his uh, Donda track and mm -hmm. uh, Pusher used his Donda track. I think Donda definitely was an iconic album. I personally, if I'm rating both albums, I'm going to listen to Donda first for listenability. But if I'm putting albums on a, on a scale... I put Mr. Ryan and Big Steppers up there uh, higher for the rapping ability, still showing that you can spit it with the best of them, still being as, as vulnerable as he was. Yeah, that's true. Donna you know, just got them hits, though. Like, Donna got some... Who's there when I need a shoulder to lean on? I hope you did when I need the demons of mean God. That shit crazy. That's what I'm saying. A big, collection, a big collection of great-ass music. But, like, low-key, when he said smoking on top five, I Off think he was talking about his pen, rapping. Hip hop. I'm smoking y'all top five. So, and that's mm. why people struggle putting Kanye up in that that thing because Kanye is such a monumental uh, rapper. You know what I'm saying? Do you think N95 is better than Off the Grid? Not even close for me. Yes. We Off the Grid. grid N95. Grid. I'm putting over and Off the Grid, and I love Off the Grid. N95, bro. Come on. When I was in jail, I was low key. Shout out my, my brothers and wrote me. me. Did you got the best five year verse of the year. From him. Damn. First it go viral, then it go digital. <laughs> that shit fire. I'm taking that back for and now. That, but wow, that's a great question. Because Loki, y'all, I don't know about y'all. I'm in instant love with N95. Take that shit. Take off the foo foo. Take off the crowd chase. Take off the Wi Fi. <laughs> take off the fake ass. Right, I'm going to take 10. I'm going to top five. I fucking love. Bro, that beat drop in N95 is impeccable. That is, that is some of the best music that dropped this year in 95. The fact that he goes from, uh, what's Spenton in the safe house? Spenton in the safe. And I feel like I'm, he went crazy, but like off the like grid, I lose, I got. man, off the grid is too fire, bro. It's too fire. That's why I'm saying, that's why it's tough for me. But then again, there's songs on Donna that I could put up against songs like Father Time and Crown and like y'all niggas be hating on Rich Spear, Rich Nigga, Broke Phone, something, something. Stop playing with me before I turn you to a song. That song's <laughs> so fire. That drink, what I, the fuck is wrong with y'all niggas? You know what I realized, y'all? I like the Kendrick a whole lot. <laughs> Obviously, a lot better than y'all did. Because there's people gonna hear, who, who gonna hear me say that I put it over Donda and be like, what? Because people think about the event of Donda. The house, the album, the, the delays, the it's dropping this day, the live concerts. We were all a part of that experience. That was like that was like no other. You know what I'm saying? And what do you call it? Recency bias. For you, for this, for the listening. For me, for what's the name? I do definitely have it. And people always call me a Kanye hater recently. I, I'm not Kanye, but a Kendrick. People have been recently calling me a Kendrick hater. I have no idea why. Yeah. I'm not a hater, bro. I'm just trying to keep it a hundred. And I've been staying, I have I've been a stand in the past in the past. Wait, 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 wait. I want to give a big shout out to the Boston Celtics, man. Believe it or not, by the time y'all hear this, I think that game is the night and we're getting ready to take that from them Heat boys. Let me tell you something. My man Jason Tatum, bona fide superstar. Stop playing with him. Hey, my man uh Jalen Brown, bona fide superstar. Stop playing with him. My superstar. man Marcus Smart. Bonafide superstar rings Superstar? Coming. Stop playing with them. Stop playing with them boys in green. Because my man Jason Tatum's the real superstar. But guess what? Marcus Smart and Jalen Br <laughs> <laughs> They can be some superstars. Okay. And have a superstar night. Chris Bruchard. Nick. What I think. That's what you sound like. <laughs> he can't guard him. <laughs> he can't guard him. <laughs> But shout out to the Boston Celtics, man. They honestly are making a uh, a crazy little run of the... But it ain't over. It definitely ain't over. It's 3-2 right now. That heat can come, take that game, and then it's game seven in Miami. Oh, I can't wait. But y'all know I've been talking shit about the Celtics. You know, somebody, you know... Somebody... You think Luka and them can, can do a, another 3-1 comeback? And I think 100% not. I think y'all going up against some boys that's done this before. We got three rings. We smell blood. 
we're not letting this shit. We're not letting this shit slide. And if y'all do, Steph, <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna do. <laughs> but I don't see the Warriors dropping this at all. I'm looking at Warriors Celtics, man. And I'm, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm not picking. I can't pick. I can't yeah. pick. I, my, y'all know I already basically picked Celtics. But man, I want if Steph go to the finals, I want Steph to get a ring and finals MVP. That's what I want for Steph. More than I want for Tatum. I grew up on Steph. I grew up on Steph. Terrell yeah. will tell you, I was a Steph Curry fan before all of you oh, niggas. Ten, you even said this a thousand times. I go was ahead. a Steph Curry <laughs> fan when that nigga was coming off the bench. Niggas don't realize that Steph was coming off the bench when they still had Jared Jack. And Monte Ellis. It was and- Jared Jack. Nah, Jared Jack. It was Jared Jack. It was, it was Monte Ellis, but Monte Ellis ended up leaving the team, and it was Jared Jack. I used to play 2K and be like, why the fuck is they, do they start Jared Jack? Because Steph was coming off the bench. If I'm not mistaken, I think Clay was in the starting lineup before Steph. Feel me? So my thing is Are like... Are you sure? Watch my info be correct. Because that was 2008 Warriors, right? This nigga got me typing. Because Terrence be saying something and people be like, do me a favor, never talk sports again. Because you be wrong. Steph was drafted in one of the realest drafts, uh, one of the realest years ever, 09. That's why he's so great, believe it or not. Steph was drafted in 09. Think about it. When they drafted Steph Curry, they already had two guys who could play the one. When they drafted Clay, they didn't really have a two. I so, so Steph was there before Clay. Steph was definitely there before Clay. I'm talking about starting lineup. Somebody correct me if I'm if I'm wrong, but Clay Clay didn't have to fight as bad for that starting lineup as as uh, Steph did. Steph went against two legit dudes, Jared Jack, uh, Monte Ellis. First off, Monte Ellis was a beast. Real niggas know. Like I said, anyway, I only wanted to say, I remember when I used to have to sub Steph Curry in because I knew of his shooting ability. That's when that's right before he started lighting the league up. Everybody was picking the Warriors. I couldn't pick him no more. People are going to be like, that. Terrence always says that he was first and something. Well, guess what? Some people are. Some people <laughs> do be hit first. And, and that's back when Monte Ellis was that dude in 29, 20, 20, 2009, 2010. Bro, Monte Steph Curry Ellis was, was that averaging nigga. like 17 points or something like that. Monte was averaging 25. Isn't, but do you see, like, but the Steph promise? Steph always in, had that shot. Steph had map. Steph was like, who do we see? Who do, who are we seeing now? Where it's almost like when they had Flacco out there, and it's like, yo, Lamar, he <laughs> need to be starting. <laughs> no bullshit. But I did want to ask you. Um, shout out to uh, the NBA in the in the series and shit. Yeah, NBA playoffs turn up. Um, but what do you think about the NFL potentially moving on from the Pro Bowl? That's on the table. Like, what do we do with the Pro Bowl this year? What do you think they should do? What are your thoughts? I think if they bring back, did they do AFC versus NFC this year? Yeah, and it was it was like a big it was like a nobody took it really serious. I thought it was a lot of fun. Yeah, but nobody really took it serious. People were like, "This was a waste of." Nah, it's hard to watch them. I don't know if you watch. They don't even tackle. Yeah, they just they just running through niggas and you got a touchdown. If you bring back the seriousness of it, then I would watch it. I mean, I feel like to say, "Oh, but you know, there's injuries and there's there's things that can happen." Mm-hmm. So don't play, you know? But that's the thing. They said they had so many dropouts last year on top of people not playing serious because of injuries and shit. Yeah. And they were like, well, there's people that say maybe they should do a flag football thing or maybe they should do a – this dude had a good idea where he said they should do, like, strength competition. They should do, like, combine stuff. Yeah. But with the people that's already in the league. That would be dope. I mean, you're going to definitely lose some – I mean, with – I mean, the NBA – has found a way to make the all-star game competitive again by switching the rules up, you know? Yeah. And I actually didn't fuck with it at first, but now I really fuck with what the NBA does. They're starting over every quarter. Yeah, like, I wouldn't mind seeing on the actual field, like, them doing, like, the top DB against the top receiver, and we just doing one-on-ones. I wouldn't mind seeing stuff like that or... Well, I like the racist stuff, too, because think about it, like, the... The who's faster than Tariq Hill. Yeah. You can take like advantage. That shit, yeah. That'd be dope. I just feel like there's so much history behind the, uh, the, Pro, the Bowl? Pro Bowl that to see it go away would be like, damn. like To see that go away, I mean, does the accolades of past superstars go away too? 
Because when you retire, you can say I should be in the Hall of Fame because I was a this time Pro Bowler. Oh, yeah. This time. This time All Pro. But the Pro Bowl has been a, a joke for the last 10 years almost. You know? Yeah. I've been in the Pro Bowl the last five years. We had Brandon Scherf go to the Pro Bowl last this year. Motherfucker was trash. Yeah. Straight up. Played like some straight ass and went to the Pro Bowl. My boy DeAndre Carter, he was cool. He was a rookie. That motherfucker wasn't lighting up. You know what I'm saying? Return after return, but because he averaged the most yards and we did our thing voting, we voted him into the Pro Bowl as yeah. a returner. But it's like, are you really DeAndre Carter, a Pro Bowl returner? You're not Cordell, Par- Cordell Patterson or, or, or what's the dude's last name? Start with a G. Gant- Ted. You're not Ted Ginn. You're not Hester. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But you got a Pro Bowl on your belt now. Now you get to say, I was ready to the Pro Bowl last year. But you just say some big ass names. For somebody to, as but, a rookie. But I mean, as a returner, when you think Pro Bowl returner, you don't think of the guy who averaged the most yards in that year. Yeah. Because like I said, DeAndre Carter show up to your store, whatever. You you working back in uh, whatever. He said, yeah, I want to buy a TV. Oh, you don't know me? I'm a Pro Bowl. I'm a Pro Bowl player, nigga. Who? Did you play for the football team? <laughs> I didn't know he was a Pro Bowler. <laughs> What do you think about the? I was. What do you think about these play? Uh, the NFL started OTAs, which is the organized team activities. Yeah. Um, and a lot of players aren't showing up because they want better contracts. And I don't know. I just feel like it's kind of divish. I just feel like players are being divas behind these contracts. I love it. You know, get your money, whatever. But y'all sign up for these sports and sign contracts. There's a lot of people that sign contracts, and now they're saying. I don't like my contract, so I'm not showing up because I want somebody to look at my contract. It's like, all right, y'all not standing on y'all pen. You was happy to pick up the pen, smile at the camera, and sign. Everything was cool. But now, since this person over here got $20 million more than you on a new contract, now you're not even showing up to OTAs? I mean, but I get it, though. Buck the system, get more money, but who was that, who was that dude? What was his name? Something Knox. The wide receiver that got that big ass deal that changed everything. And they keep blaming him. I forget. I forget his fucking name. But he got a that wide receiver got that big ass deal. And then now all of the wide receivers are like, oh, I wanna I need a new contract. I now need- people that deserve it, like people like Terry, people that deserve a new contract, AJ Brown was like, what's going on? Alright. But some of these people, it's like, all right, just show up to practice. Just show up to OTAs, dog. Yeah, and it definitely put, I mean. Those type of contracts, the big contracts, they definitely put pressure on teams to be more like we either got to pay our quarterback or our receiver now. Because now receivers just like want that big time contract like quarterback. What I'll say, I feel like you got to take in, in mind that if we're going to be out there playing physically and I'm worried about my contract and you're not extending me, I'm low key putting my. <laughs> putting myself at risk. I'm low key. Putting myself at risk. If I go out here and snap my Achilles, y'all really not going to give a fuck about my contract. And now I'm going to prove it. And I'm not really being able to get a contract based off what I've done. I got to get a contract based off of how they think I'm going to be after this injury. Yeah. And we've seen it happen to plenty of people. So while I want to be like, man, I want Terry there. To be with our young guys. You know what I'm saying? I want Chase there to be with our young guys, even though Chase wasn't there for the injuries. But when I hear about players not holding out for their contract, I'm always in the middle. I want you to go and do your job because you feel like you signed an obligation to do so on some Stephen A shit. But then on some Max Kellerman shit, I'm like, well, I'm not about to push, push my, yeah. put my physical in. Think about if you could risk getting COVID and you knew that if you got COVID, they would let you go. But they don't want to tell you if you're going to have a new job. You could get security. Oh, we're going to sign you in two years. You never get, if you get COVID, all right, cool. We got you. You got another year to prove yourself. But now, your job's telling you, yeah, we're going to think about it. Yeah, we're still thinking about it. Oh, but we need you to work this week. And you know that if you catch COVID, they, they, that they might let you go. Or if you catch some shit, you'll be like, mm, I don't think that I'm going to fucking go in. Fire me. Because at this point, I can go work somewhere else. They tried to say that De'Aaron Payne walked off of, uh, I'm sorry, they tried to say that De'Ron Payne walked off of the uh, field during the physical parts of our practice, and he came out and said that that was a lie. And all the players were like, yo, the media is working against the players now. That's what a lot of the, Jonathan uh, Allen was like, you see how they trying to do us, bruh. 
We like, nah, nigga. You threw a punch at this man. <laughs> Get off the TL with this <laughs> brother shit. What you think about, you know, speaking of your commanders, what you think about that new stadium built? I like it. Woodbridge, Virginia. Woodbridge, VA. I'm going to keep it 100, y'all. Putting up stadium in D.C. next to the Nationals, who already have their stadium, Nationals Park, next to the Capital One or, or the Verizon, whatever it is now, where the Wizards play and everything happens. I feel like it would be a lot of traffic and permits and things that we would need to get. Just think about going to D.C. now. It would be a headache going to the Washington Commanders game in D.C. I like that it's off the grid. It's in Woodbridge. We get to put up a big mall of attractions. We bought a, we, we spent a hundred million on it, but we supposed to be getting a whole bunch of attractions and stuff like that. Mind you, this is a, we spent a hundred million on the land. That's what people are forgetting. We didn't even spend money for the stadium yet. Feel me? We mm -hmm. spent a hundred M's on the land that the stadium about to be on. So we about to go nuts. I feel like we about to have a dope ass campus. I'm not mad at it. I'm like I like how it's out of the way. And like I said, we will never change our name from Washington. We'll always be Washington. We're never going to be Virginia Commanders. Woodbridge Commanders. The Woodbridge Commanders. Hey, look, we That's didn't good. know the curse was in the Washington part. <laughs> Three and 18. Can't like escape it. it. For sure. Well, that's all we got for sports, man. Sports. I really got nothing else for sports. I got nothing And you know what? The USFL. I don't know if anybody's ever watched any of them USFL games. I don't watch the fan control joint because it's a little arena football-ish. Yeah. But the USFL is like real football. And that joint is actually dope. I watched the game when I was. Where was I at? Where the fuck was I where I watched one of them games? I don't even remember where the fuck I was. But I remember watching that, uh, a game. I forget the team. Oh, I was at the motherfucking uh, Yotel in D.C. I uh, went to a brunch. And I was like, damn, that, this, these games is jolly. lit. I don't yeah. know nothing about the teams or nothing. But And a shout out to everybody that watched that big soccer game or whatever it was. That's like the, It was like a huge game. Um... That happened. Y'all know we're not real big, you know, soccer folks, but I heard that game was huge. And I'm about to say, I don't even know who won or what the whatever was for that, but shout out, man. I know soccer's a huge sport, for sure. We need to start doing some soccer videos. Come on, buggers, a tune in. I don't even put, I, damn. All right. You got anything? Got anything or no? I don't have nothing else. I feel like this is a short podcast this week, y'all. Believe it or not, it's been all right. A slow news week. Me and Trevor cooking quiet. up a uh, a nice, mm -hmm. you can say it. a nice vlog for y'all, man. I'm excited. I'm so excited for this joint to get out. Not nah, really. I'm so excited for y'all to see the vlog, man. Turn up. It's not gonna go on Patreon. Believe it or not, the vlog is something that's just gonna go up on YouTube. We're not gonna bullshit y'all with that. You know what I'm saying? Everybody deserves to see the vlogs. It's where we started. So yeah, those will always be on YouTube. Those will always go up on YouTube unless we do some exclusive shit. Um, but y'all know we started with vlogging and vlogging just seems to be, I told Terrell, I look at our vlogs and I just feel like, man, like, yo, we not shit at this. We not like trash. Like, yo, this joint, all right. So y'all see that. Y'all will definitely probably oh, see yeah. that soon. That joint is going to be dope. Prayers to the families, man, of those 19 children and, and, and God rest the souls of those 19 kids and two teachers, man. Some, some shit got changed.